Here's an example that'll clarify comparative and absolute advantage. So you have an individual here, Mark, who can mow a lawn faster than anyone else. It takes him one hour to mow an acre lawn. He can also work as an accountant, and he's not the best accountant in the world, he's an okay accountant, and can make $30 an hour as a local bookkeeper. Another individual, John, isn't as fast as Mark at mowing lawns. It takes him two hours to mow an average size lawn. John's alternative is working at a local pizzeria and making $10 an hour. So, looking through this, who has an absolute advantage in mowing a lawn? So, think about it. Absolute advantage means fewer inputs. In this case, the input that we're looking at to mow the lawn is time. So take a second and think, who takes less time to mow the lawn? Okay, well, Mark only takes an hour, where John takes two hours. So, Mark has an absolute advantage in mowing lawns. So Mark is the best at mowing lawns. It only takes him one hour versus it would take John two. So Mark has an absolute advantage. Now, does this necessarily mean that Mark should be the person mowing lawns in the society? Well, this isn't really complete, right? It doesn't take into consideration the alternatives, right? Instead of being a uh, individual that mows lawns, Mark can work as a bookkeeper, but absolute advantage doesn't take that into consideration. John's alternative is to work at the pizzeria. So let's go through the next trade concept, comparative advantage. Remember, comparative advantage is based off of opportunity cost. You have a comparative advantage when you have a lower opportunity cost than someone else. So who has a comparative advantage in mowing lawns? Well, if Mark mows a lawn, it takes him one hour, and in that time period, he could have made $30 an hour. So as an account, right? So as his opportunity cost for this example is $30, he could have made. Then looking at John, John could have worked at the pizzeria for two hours and he could have made $20. So John's opportunity cost to mow a lawn, if he's mowing the lawn, he's not at the pizzeria, is $20. So think about this. Who has a comparative advantage in mowing lawns? If you chose John, you're correct, right? He gave up only $20, whereas Mark's opportunity cost is 30. So John actually has the advantage in this case. John has a lower cost of mowing a lawn, and therefore he would be willing to do it at a lower price than Mark would. So continuing on with this example, who would we see with the lawnmower, Mark or John? So this really teases out what should people specialize on, absolute advantage or comparative advantage? Remember, Mark has the absolute advantage, whereas John has the comparative advantage when it comes to mowing lawns. So who are we gonna see with the lawnmower? Well, the individual with the comparative advantage or John. Now, should Mark mow his own lawn or should he hire John to do it? And if John is hired, what is a potential price that could benefit both parties? So let's think about this for a second. Mark's the person that is the best at mowing lawns, but we're actually gonna see John mowing lawns. Why? Because being the best at something doesn't mean it's worth your time. Because in this scenario, what happens? If John's mowing the lawn, he's only giving up being at the pizzeria. If Mark's mowing the lawn, he's giving up more because he's giving up that higher value job as a bookkeeper. So we're gonna see John mowing the lawn and let's think of a potential price that could benefit both parties. So looking at price, price for this trade could be anywhere between $20 and $30. For example, if the lawn was less than 20, John would not agree to do it because he would say, well, I could work at the pizzeria and make $20 over the two hours that it would take me to mow that average size lawn. So the price of the lawn has to be greater than 20 or theoretically equal to 20 to make it worthwhile for John to consider mowing the lawn. For Mark, the price would have to be less than 30 because he can mow the lawn in one hour and his opportunity cost therefore is giving up bookkeeping for one hour where he could have made $30. So if John says, well, I want 35 for the lawn, Mark would say, I'll just do it myself. So the price for this trade has to be somewhere between 20 
and $30. Let's just say one possible price is 25. Now we said trade can make everyone better off. Now at a price of 25, can Mark and John both be better off? Well, let's think about it. Mark would be $5 better off than his alternative because the alternative would be for him to mow the lawn himself and it would cost him the $30 he could have made as a bookkeeper. So now if he hires John for 25, he's saving $5 versus doing it himself and therefore he's $5 better off. John would also be $5 better off than the alternative. The alternative to mowing this lawn would be that he would have to work at the pizzeria for two hours where he could have only made $20. So if he makes $25 in this scenario, he's $5 better off than his alternative. So you can see trade can cause both parties to gain. Now this is true for individuals, it could also be true for countries. So you can see how people specialize based off of comparative advantage and not necessarily based off of absolute advantage. Hopefully this helps.